Everything that I've just mentioned is an anatomical fact. It's not really open for debate. Tendons don't stretch. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the dangers of trying to stretch your hand to increase the span of your hand. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna talk about trying to increase your hand span and why this is something that you should not focus on when it comes to playing the piano. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to explain what I'm talking about. So when I say trying to increase your hand span, what I'm talking about is finger or hand stretches where you're trying to basically increase how far you can reach on the piano. So if you can only reach, say, a seventh, you want to be able to reach an octave, or if an octave, then you want to reach a ninth, etc. Now, there's two specific reasons why this is completely unhelpful and not really worthwhile. The first one is, is that tendons or ligaments in your hand uh, don't really stretch, okay? So it's not a secret that in your hand, okay, when we move our fingers like so, what moves our fingers is tendons that connect to our fingers that go then through our wrist and then connect to muscles in our forearm forearm, excuse me. But those tendons essentially are what move our hand. And those tendons are connected at fixed points to our fingers and to our muscles. And unlike muscles, tendons don't stretch. I already said that a couple times and I'll say it a couple more times again because it's such an important thing to realize. If you're trying to stretch something in, in your hand or anything that doesn't stretch, it's never going to work, okay? So that's the first thing. The other thing that's related to that is that in our hand, on our fingers, we have all of these joints, right? So one, two, three, on every single finger, you know, all of these knuckle joints, etc. And on our hand, our fingers go all the way back and connect to our wrist joint back here. And then we have tissue in between each one of those individual sort of fingers essentially, okay? So people sometimes think of their fingers stopping here, but really it goes all the way back here. And on every single joint in the hand that we have, there are ligaments or pieces of tissue on either side of the joint. And I'll put a picture up here so that you can see what that looks like. And basically what those, uh, what those ligaments or pieces of tissue do is it tries to keep the joint from bending too far in either direction. So for instance, you know, let's take this, this little knuckle joint here. There are ligaments on either side of here to try to keep that joint from bending too far to either side. Now you'll notice that that joint doesn't really move much. Now this joint here is made to move a little bit, right? You can see how it kind of pivots there. However, again, we have these, these ligaments on either side that keep it from bending too far. So when we stretch, we're going to be basically trying to stretch both of those things, the, the ligaments that keep our joints from bending too far, and also we're gonna, it's gonna be trying to stretch the tendons, okay? So I've, I've seen this before where this pianist was like, okay, you know, put a finger here and then see how far you can stretch between these fingers and like, you know, <laughs> do things like that. Think about what that's doing, okay? You can see that it's, it's trying to stretch these joints, it's trying to bend them, and fight against those ligaments. And if the tendons are fixed at set points, they, they can't move any farther. If I bend this farther and farther, it's gonna actually be pulling on that tendon and trying to stretch it. But again, like I said, I'll say it several times throughout this video, tendons don't stretch. If you do kind of pull on them enough, they, they seem like they're stretching, they're actually not, you're just damaging them, okay? So this is an incredible, uh, incredibly important point to make and to fully understand, okay? Now, the second reason why this doesn't help and why we shouldn't try to increase our hand span is this is not really how we play the piano. And I have a couple examples here, okay? So the first thing that I just wanna mention is go on YouTube and search for Martha Argerich or you know whatever your favorite pianist is. What you will notice is that when they play the piano, they don't have their hand stretched out like this all the time, in fact, their hand tends to be more in this position, okay? Because when we stretch our hand all the time, we're activating all these other muscles in the hand, which decrease mobility and increase tension in general, okay? So if you watch enough professional pianists and you pay attention to that point, you'll notice that yes, of course, there's times where you're gonna have to stretch the hand or open the hand to be able to play something, or if you have to, 
you know, play a larger interval like a tenth, and you can kind of, you know, stretch a little bit to reach that, but then always release, and the hand goes back to this shape, okay? So, like I mentioned before, when you're stretching that hand, okay, you're pulling against everything in your hand, the, the tendons, the muscles, there's ligaments on either sides of the knuckles and the joints, etc. And it sort of puts strain on all of them, so things don't move as easily and as freely. Instead, when we play the piano, we want to think about always opening and closing the hand, opening and closing the hand, so that those muscles are not having constant strain be put against them. Now, this is something that I've talked about a million times in other videos, but when we play the piano, if I walk from one finger to the next, I want to just easily and naturally shift from finger to finger, even if I'm playing an arpeggio, same thing, okay? I'm just going to shift across the keyboard, and I'm not going to try to stretch and reach between each one of those intervals because that's going to stretch the hand apart. So it's important to realize and understand that we don't play the piano by being able to reach really, really, you know, far apart intervals and things like that. Now, this of course begs the question, well, what about all of the people who claim to have had great benefit from doing these stretching exercises? And there's a couple ways I think that you can think about this. Everything that I've just mentioned is an anatomical fact. It's not really open for debate. Tendons don't stretch. The ligaments that are on all of your joints, they're not meant, they're literally there to keep the joint from moving farther. So if you're trying to push that joint farther, you can see how you're just fighting against your body's own mechanisms and that could, of course, be a bad thing. So I think at this point, it's important to think about experience versus reality, okay? So we've all, you know, had some sort of experience that seems to imply something, but then we find out at some point that the reality is something different, and it's the same when we play the piano. If you haven't really tried to stretch your hand, and what's comfortable is to stretch your hand about like this, okay? And if you go beyond that, it starts feeling kind of uncomfortable. What will happen is if you keep stretching and stretching your hand and stretching your hand, especially if you're using something else to stretch your hand, you know, like the keyboard or something, and you use that to like really get that stretch in there, what is comfortable will change. So in other words, when I did this, that used to be really uncomfortable, but now my joints and my ligaments in my hand are used to that. So it doesn't feel uncomfortable but it doesn't actually mean that it's not uncomfortable, okay? Your muscles and things will get used to uncomfortable positions or being used in an uncomfortable way if it's done enough. In other words, if I just keep stretching and stretching and stretching, it's not necessarily that I'm being able to reach farther and farther intervals on the piano, it's that I feel more at ease when I'm stretching because I've gotten used to that discomfort and that tension. So I think that this is really just a case of experience versus reality, which can be, of course, quite different. Now, the, the sort of take takeaway point that I wanna make is that straining our hands will never help us play piano better. Play some really big chord. It doesn't really matter you know, what it is, just something that's really big in your hand and really stretches it out. Play that and just notice how that feels and then immediately go and play something else that's really fast, okay? You know, a scale or an arpeggio or something. What you'll notice is that it's a very hard transition to make because what you essentially just did is you strained everything really hard so there's all this tension and then you went and tried to play something else. If you play the piano like that where you're always straining your hand, you know, um, whatever it is, there's different ways to strain your hand of course but thinking about you know, just stretching your hand as much as possible and then go to play something else, what you'll notice is that it's hard to do, it's hard to make that transition. So as much as possible, we want to avoid those kinds of things. And by the way, there are ways of playing very large chords or large intervals um, to, in a way that doesn't actually strain your hand. And I have a video that talks about that. I'll put a card up above at this point. The last thing that I just wanna mention very briefly is that if you physically can't reach chord, you're playing you know, Rachmaninoff and he had huge hands and he could play these gigantic chords, you don't actually have to play that. Like 
there's uh, many pianists, now female pianists who have very small hands that play all of that music. And you have to be able to find creative solutions to be able to play it without straining your hand so that you're not building tension, so that you're not causing problems. So I hope that that was interesting and informative. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.